well students in the last section we did talk about the first part of the plant kingdom that is the cryptogams and i repeat the cryptogams plants which do not have any well defined organs that is root system shoot system but then we came into the phanerogams which had a proper well defined root and shoot system vascular uh, tissue that is xylem phloem for conduction of water and food etc so looking into that if we look going into the strain the plant considered as living fossils is sladinella pinus cycas maize if we look at the plant considered as the living fossil actually it should be living fossil it is cycas if you remember even the last session where it say that cycas though it belongs to gymnosperm which are phanerogams produce seed but when it comes to its spermatogen that is the male sex cells the male sex cells are flagellated unlike any other form or any other phanerogam any other gymnosperm or sorry any other gymnosperm or any other angiosperm and this being a phanerogam as has uh, flagellated sperm is considered as a living fossil that means the plant might have evolved from the tide of fights into gymnosperms it interlinks the tide of fights and the gymnosperms so the correct option is cycas next trees with needle shaped leaves having cuticle on surface are of now the question is trees with needle shaped leaves that means <laughs> leaves like this like the string needle right and then these needles they this these needle like leaves have gone thick cuticle on their surface and you know what is cuticle for cuticle is meant for water conservation and you are aware that these plants with the needle shaped leaves are pinus these pinus are found in cold hilly conditions and they have cuticle to conserve water why because in the winter time which is a longer period of hilly areas what happens when water outside get frozen and if the water outside get frozen then inside water would also get very cold and may freeze therefore in order that this inside water with the leaf should not freeze the leaves have got thick cuticle they have got thick lining under the cell wall for a proper easy survival for a proper easy survival therefore you like even the lake if you see a visited lake or a pond if the upper surface of the water is frozen the water underneath the frozen layer is liquid 
why such that the aquatic animals such as fishes and other organisms can easily survive in this liquid water while the upper water is froze, frozen off so that's uh, in order to conserve the water the pines or the pines as we call as are the ones which have got the cuticle shape uh, leaves with the cuti cuticle on the surface next which of the statement below is correct for pines we just learned pines are found in the hilly areas have got needle shaped leaves and in all these pines <coughs> being gymnosperms <coughs> they don't produce flower they are non flowering they produce what we call as cone you might have seen the structures like this woody like structures with the branches end right now these cones are the characteristic of the pines in which the fertilization take place development of seed take place etc now the question is talking of two male cone and female cone because a male pine plant is different a female pine plant is different like papaya papaya you know what you call in india as papita there is a male papaya plant and there is a female pla papaya plant same thing there is a male pine plant and there is a female pine plant the statement says male cone is larger than female cone male cone is smaller than female cone both male and female cones are equal size pinus does not produce any cone in its lifetime so the fourth is out of question because being a gymnosperm it produces cone now the question is a comparison question which is bigger than naturally the other is smaller and pine will rely the female cone is bigger and far more woody than the male cone so looking at that factor the option b comes out to be the correct that the male cone is smaller than the female cone in the pines right the next the presence of reticulate venation and fibrous root is the characteristic of gymnosperms monocotyledons dicotyledons none of the above now the presence of reticulate venation venation when we talk of we talk of leaf that there are two leaves like this in parallel venation is like this and reticulate the venation is like this network of veins are coming out from the midrib and then roots we look that two type of roots one are called fibrous roots which are like fibers down just below the under surface of the plant and the other are tap roots like that of a carrot or radish you might have seen off from where the branches arise like this so this is parallel this is articulate this is fibrous and this is tap root now the question is saying reticulate venation that means venation of this type fibrous roots this type that means plants with this type to which class do they belong gymnosperm monocot dicot or none actually the answer would be none why because when we look at monocots monocots have got parallel venation and fibrous root dicots have got 
reticulate venation and tap root. So it can't be parallel and fibrous. It can't be reticulate and tuberous. As they are opposing. Gymnosperms we did talk about. Pine which have got the needle shaped leaves. Now in needle shaped leaves we hardly expect any sort of venation. So first is out. Second if the parallel if the venation is parallel, the root has to be fibrous, which is not, as the question says, reticulate and fibrous. Same dicot cannot be there, and hence we are left with the last option and none of the above. Then there is no plan that pauses parallel venation and has got tap root. In brief, we can say a plan if a plant has got parallel venation, he, the plant has got fibrous root. If it has got reticulate venation, naturally the roots will be tapped roots. Am I clear? That's the answer. The plants bearing stomata with kidney shaped guard cells are. Now, stomata, you know, and the surface of leaves, if we look at there are some structures like this. that we call as stoma, singular for stomata. Now if you look at this microscopically, it looks like this. These are guard cells. And this opening is the one that allows the water to, uh, the plant to lose water to exchange gases. That oxygen will go out during daytime and carbon dioxide would come in. Now these guard cells, they can be kidney shaped. Kidney shaped means like rasma beans. Or they can be like this, dumbbell bell, like two dumbbells being placed together. The dumbbells used by wrestlers to make their muscles, their shoulder muscles. They can be this or they can be dumbbell, dumbbell shape. Now what it's saying is kidney shape, this type of stomata in which of these plants these are found bryophytes you know they are the cryptogams no leaf no stomata desert plants it can be monocot it can be dicot we are not sure so again we are left with two options monocot or dicot and the study shows that the dicots have got kidney shape guard cells whereas monocots have got dumbbell bell shaped guard cells and hence the correct answer comes out to be the C. Dicots are the plants which be a stomata having the kidney shaped cells or the rasma shaped rasma bean shaped cells Right. Next. The source of all cereals you eat are cereals. As you are aware, cereals, when we talk of, we talk of things like wheat, rice, maize, sorghum. All these plants, they belong to the class of the food that we call as cereals, food products that we call as cereals. And what are these cereals? Are they gymnosperms? No. Are they tetrophytes? No, we don't eat any tetrophyte. Monocot and dicot can be again the choice is, and if we look at 
they are monocots. Why monocots are the ones in which we see there is only a single grain. Unlike a seed in which we find two grains like this. Just like a pea plant or any legume. If you uh, place in water for some time and then you take the peel out, you'll find that the inside of seed can be split open into two. Because this plant, it belongs to the dicot. And if we can't do it, it remains single. Just like wheat, rice, etc. We don't see any furrow in the rice. If a rice grain is like this, we don't see any furrow in between. Then it is none but it is a mono corn. So that the basic difference, another basic difference between the monocot and dicot. Monocot have got only one, while dicot have got two. With no fissure. Sorry, with fissure and monocot without fissure and dicot with fissures. Next, the reproductive appendage of an angiosperm is called reproductive appendage. Appendage means an outgrowth. And reproductive, that means it, an outgrowth that takes part in the plant reproduction. And that outgrowth is none, but is flower because leaf don't take any part in reproduction neither thorn nor stem tendril so we are left with the flower all need to be the reproductive appendage of the plant that be in the male and female reproductive organs in the form of androecium and gynoecium right in onion the food is stored in form of now this is a very very important question many times that we asked in the previous exams in one way or another. Because if we look at fungi, in onion, sorry, onion is an underground stem, adventitious stem. The leaves are also modified and are found underground. Normally plants store their food in the form of starch. Because in leaf what happens? Sugar is produced in form of glucose. And soon this glucose is converted into form of starch. But what happens in onion is that glucose is converted into other forms of sugar, not starch. It remains in the form of sugar. It remains in the form of sugar, whether it's onion or it's garlic. The stored food is in the form of sugar. Same way, if we look at glycosin, glycosin is the stored food in the fungi. In all the plants belonging to the class fungi, if there is any stored food that is in the form of glycosin, that makes the fungi similar to animals. Because in all animals, the food is stored in the form of glycosin or in the form of fats. Starch in normal green plants, cellulose out of question because it is a component of cell wall, not a type of food being stored in a plant. Next, in groundnut, the flowering and pollination occurs. Above our surface in air, below in the soil, at the interface of the air and soil, no flowering takes place in ground nut. Ground nut, you know, peanuts. If we look at the plants, here is the plant. The question says, either the flower is out in the air, or the plant, flower is somewhere here, that half of the flower is above ground and half is in the soil. And the other is that is soil, the flower is within the soil. One, two, three. At what time does the 
pollination and fertilization take place because grounded as you know is the nut we get underground we have to dig the roots and in order to uh, get the ground nuts the parts of the ground nuts the, the studies have revealed that the flowering take place above the earth surface and so also the pollination and fertilization once the pollination fertilizer has completed outside then what happens after that the stem bends down at its own in a form of a pod where it develops as a complete mature pod with a seed inside so groundnut is characterized by the flowering pollination fertilization outside in the air but the further development of the sea embryo and seed take place down in the soil after the pollinated and fertilized flower or ovary has immersed itself into the soil surface where it gets the necessary warmth heat needed for the development next most of the good quality timber timber yielding plants timber means wood for furniture you use different type of furniture at home or in the offices chair beds tables Study tables. All these sort of the furniture are made up of wood, or even the doors and window frames. Where do we get this wood from? The wood used to make them is what we call as timber. And which type of plants are good sources of wood? Because if you look at the wood, you will realize that some there are different type of woods. If you take an equal length of the uh, wood taken from a different plants and leave them out in the sun for a different time, you will find that after the woods, the water get evaporated from the wood. Either the wood retains its own length and strength, while in case it may get shrunk, it may get bent, etc. And naturally, the one. which would be considered the good quality is the one that remains as it was before being left uh, open in the uh, sun for the water to dry or the wood to dry and water to evaporate and if you look at all these classes monocots dicots conifers cycadales we realize it is the conifers that is like teak for spruce pine that are good sources of timber and these all belongs to the class that we consider as conifers so these are the questions that we have discussed based uh, so far been asked on the Fanro camps, particularly the emphasis on the monocot, dicots, cycas as a uh, living fossil, and pines being used as good quality timber sources is an important ones to be remembered. Well, thanks.